All right, this is day one of our CPP Week to Wicked for Super Chevy Magazine presented by Golden Star. Um, again, we are starting with just a body, a chassis, yep. and that's about it. Uh, the guys at CPP did work pretty hard to get this prepped up, glasses in, trim is on. They got some stuff going on on the inside, so that's gonna save us some time. And this is what we always do on all of our builds. We get the body ready and prepped, ready to go. Usually the body's on the chassis, not, in this, not this time. So we've done a couple like this. Um, a little bit more work, but we're up for the challenge and we've got a lot of good people here to help us out. So with that being said, it's about time we get busy. Yep. So we do have a lot of things to do. Uh, so why don't you guys check out the first part of the body build. Hey guys, this is Jordan Seekers here. So far, I've got the main floor and the trunk floor spot welded together. My next thing I'm gonna do is mark the, with the template is cut out for the mini tubs, which is about two inches. And then I'll go ahead and cut that out. And then I can start putting the firewall on and then fixture. Right now I got the firewall fitted left to right and I've got it on these pins right here which is the same spot that the frame would bolt to. This is like the main foundation for the frame and the car body to mount so that way that that's all true, perfectly true. And the whole floor is all bolted down to where the frame would be so that way everything's keyed in correctly and your body will fit exactly down on your frame. And then the next thing after I spot weld this I can go ahead and put the fixture in place. All right, right now we got the uh, fixture in place. And as you notice, we got all these cam locks right here, which is for the roof bow. This is all up for the roof. Put these into place, and then we got the ones down here for the inner quarters. This is for the whole inner structure of the car. And for removing the fixture, we can simply just pull these cam locks back down. That way we can take the fixture out, and we're good to go. So if you're a guy at home, and you don't have the fixtures like this, basically what I would do is just measure off a real car, get the best measurements you can, and then go from there. So now that the fixture is in, I can go ahead and work on the cow shoulders and then the inner quarters. This is the crucial part of the whole car, the whole structure uh, shell of the car is what we like to say. That way we can go ahead and skin it and we know the structure of the car is good. All right, so we're gonna lay out all the hardware, which is included in the kit. Getting everything in order for us. Two pickles for you, three pickles for me. Four. What the hell was that? Who What the hell was that? What's going on here? I don't know. Where are these coming in Just flying out of nowhere. Yes, I know, we're working, we're literally working in between a lift and I'm working on the ground. <laughs> a little weird, but. Okay, now this pocket here, this pocket has a recess for the spring to go into, just like a factory one. So you want to make sure you get that in the right location. How's that, Lou? Perfect. There you go. So these here are the shims uh, for alignment. And you'll probably have to fine tune it once you actually align it, but this will get it away so it puts maybe a little bit of uh, camber into it. Mike is fired. Look at Mike wants us to use these ones. Tell Mike he's fired. Mike? Yes. I don't know how much longer we can take this. Oh. Hey, who put that pump stop here? Mike? I'm glad it wasn't metal to metal. Do you guys wait to put the inlinks on the sway bar until it's on the ground? Yes. Okay, so we can just hang it. We won't put any inlinks on yet. All right. 
So their rear bars, triangular, four link, lower bar is longer than the top. These ones come in at an angle where the lower ones are down here, come in this way. It's all adjustable. That way you can just, you can center your wheel in the wheel well and you can adjust the uh, pinion angle too. And you get a bunch of articulation in this. If you're on a track and you're going through a turn, you don't have to worry about it binding. Right, Christian? Oh yeah. See? The hex to the wheel Just like that. All right, so these have a very long stroke in them. This will uh, give you a really nice smooth ride on the streets. And then as you go into a turn, they'll tighten up and you'll get that aggressive drive and feel to keep the car handling really well. Cool. There. All right. So once they're done with the rear end, we'll bring it on in here. Um, get that all hooked up and we'll have some rear suspension. And I guess the sway bars will probably wait until we get the car loaded up with some weight that we can get it at a right height and we can get the end links and everything drilled out where it needs to be. All right, so we're gonna install the steering box. This is a quick ratio steering box. Um, we can do the idler arm. These have little registers also. So they're spline, but then they got four bigger splines so you can clock it properly. So there's one. Sorry. I saw a rubber pad. <laughs> there we go. I'm already a hideous. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Okay. Wherever you think that shock's gonna lie. Don't scare me. You guys shouldn't have put the shocks even in. Just take them out. We can take them out. There you go. You're sending the rear end and then setting proper uh, pinion angle so you don't get some weird vibration driving down the road because the drive shaft's out of line. How much did you go in? Did you go all the way in? Almost all the way. Yep. Almost all the way. You have like how many? Yeah, I'm all the way going to the bag. You got like four sticking out over there? There we go. Got it. There. Open it, don't stretch All right, four links are all tight. Uh, we're getting the rear sway bar on. So we got the, everything we need. We're just gonna snug them? Yeah, just gonna snug them up because okay. we might get it out too. All right, you good over the there, right height. Yeah. Sitting on the wheel, we can just... Yeah, What we have is a J weather strip here, as they call it J. And uh, we add some little bit of weather stripping glue here. Uh, I've got my tape to glue, you know, glue it down. Let it dry for 24 hours. So uh, we should be good. Put some good glue on it. And Dan Chuck sells everything you need to make this happen. All right, so the guys are still back there working. Probably gonna put in another couple more hours. We wanna make a complete roller, suspension, brakes, steering. So with that being said, I'm gonna get back there, give them a hand, and I'm out. All right, so it is the beginning of day two, and we stayed a little bit later last night than anticipated, but we're gonna walk you through what we did, so let's check it out. So I'm just uh, greasing up the idler arm bearings here. Just packing them in. So we're gonna tighten this up all the way till it bottoms out, like this. And once it bottoms out, you're gonna back it off to the first cotter pin hole. Put your cotter pin in there. Good to go. Now my ears are ringing. Christian, you grab a jack and we'll jack her up. Christian, sit on the frame horn. Straddle it, though. I'm a frame horn, dude. 
There you go. Keep going, baby. We're gonna be there, we're there. Christian! What are you gonna do, hurt me? Okay, do a, do the jumpy. There you go. Yeah. We're, in. We're in on that one. Let me put some kata pins in there. Oh, you cutter pin? Yep, whenever you're ready. No biggie, no biggie. Well, this is the old air, air condition system. It's pretty reduced, a small size unit that you can fit in anywhere under the dash. So I'm getting ready to prep some hoses, uh, crimp them, and get it on there. Long one goes down, bro. Kids. Kids these days. Here, here. Well, it came out like that. Put a new one in. Kids. Kids these days. Oh, there we go, Christian. And then trim it. Just like that. Boom. Good. Now cut it. I like no, to, don't, I don't like it like that. I like to tuck them under. I don't like it like that. Okay, I'll cut it right there. And I'll connect that. And then, with these nice little couplings that they put on here, it makes it really easy to align the car. We're going to start to install the flexible brake line to the rear end and the hard brake lines along the rear end to the then flexible brake lines that are gonna attach to the caliper. So that's going there, that's going up here. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, so right now we are uh, getting the uh, brake lines put on. A couple little clamps that we had drilled out before. I'm just getting these installed, but this is actually a pre-bent brake line kit we're using. Uh, makes the plumbing a little easier. Okay. Okay. In this application, we've welded these brackets on. These are normally a bolt-on bracket. Okay. Um, so it's gonna make our life a little easier as far as the insulation goes because we've already spent the time getting it squared up. I'm putting the rotor on there. I like to put a couple nuts on there just to hold it in place so I can put the caliper on there and make sure everything's centered right. Um, the kit comes with some shims for the caliper bracket, just in case it's not perfectly centered. That way you can just shim it off because it's not a floater uh, caliper. It is a uh, rigid mounted, so you want to make sure it's centered. So these little registers insert into here. That's what keeps the caliper centered on the bracket. Put the Allen bolts through. We'll go ahead and tighten all that up. And we'll check and make sure the caliper's centered on the rotor. And if so, we'll go to the other side and button it up. So what we're looking for is the pads to be centered on each side of the rotor. Everything looks really good. So now I can move on to the other side. Yeah. So we're using this O-ring instead of our uh, cork gasket. That way the fuel pump drops a little bit. Yeah, it's gonna help it lay a little further lower, down, a little closer to the tank. Give us a little more clearance on the floor of the trunk. So there you go. It's all lined up. Okay, we put that on there. All right, so now that we got our caliper centered up, uh, make sure your bleed screw's up top. You'll never get your air out if it's in the bottom. All right, so I'm laying out fuel lines now, going from the tank up to the engine bay. That will complete the fuel system. After that, we gotta get the accessory drive installed on the engine, and then we can mate the two up. That's the trans and engine. Before that, you gotta get the clutch installed. So we still got a whole days of work, so let's get busy. 
making sure we're doing things right back here i think that's pretty good right there yeah, that's, that's a lot better awesome yeah and everything else is tight all right so we're ready to get our holly serpentine accessory drive kit installed on our LT engine from Gandrude Chevrolet. First thing I did was remove the uh, stock water pump. We're not gonna use that. The Holly water pump comes equipped with all the bracketry you're gonna need for your alternator power steering and your AC pump. So that being said, I've taken a sensor out of the stock water pump. That's the water temp sensor, reinstalled it. This here is for the steam line that would be on an LS. This does not have that, so I plugged it up with an eighth inch MPT plug. So now we can get started. All right. This is gonna have to go on this side. And let's see if I can do this on my own without flipping anything over. Oh man, they make that easy and nice. Okay. Up four, okay, down. Go ahead. Go. You want to make sure that slides in and out really smooth or you're gonna have a really hard time getting your transmissions input shaft into there you just keep going around these little by little you don't want to cinch them all down at the same time because as you watch these fingers as i tighten them see the fingers move all right so jay got the clutch in uh, I got the scatter shield to the block and the scatter shield will attach to the T56 transmission and the scatter shield protects you just in case this blows up, it'll protect the driver inside and the passenger. Well, why might that blow up? Tell him, Danny. What if you over rev the motor? If you're racing and you hit way too much RPM and you do something dumb and stupid? Shh. That's right. If you, for some reason, or you got a lot of horsepower and you just you drop the clutch at 10,000 RPM, who knows? That'll protect you. But we don't have to worry about that with this. Put it in gear, dude. It's in neutral. Oh, just kidding. There we go. So it needs to be this length. Is that why you traded that out? No. That is the right length, though. Oh, these are called instructions. We're day two. We're late in the day. We found some instructions. We thought we might read something. I'm going to put it in gear so we can force it on this blind. We're in. Is those. That one, we'll get one more over here. All right, I'm gonna let you take the lead on this, all right, Danny? Oh. Hold on, James. Let me get my, uh, there so, you go. Are you in over there? Yeah, I'm in. All right, go ahead. All right. Bring it down for Gary's side. Oh, you got one already? We're ready with that. Okay, that's a lot better. Lock her down. Now I'm measuring to the flat, right? Yeah, you go to the flat. So I got 49 and a half, almost exactly, right there. All right, so we are wrapping up day two. Engine and trans is in the chassis. Clutch is all set up. Measured for a drive shaft. Plumbing is done on the fuel system. All but one line. Take us two minutes tomorrow. We're gonna cut out a little early tonight. We stayed late last, so let's get some rest and get out of here. All right, so it is day three of our CPP Week to Wicked for Super Chevy Magazine presented by Golden Star. The guys are back there now working on the engine, wiring it all up, doing the e-stop, and just wrapping up some loose ends. Our big thing today, though, we got to get this body on that chassis. So sometime today, tonight, whenever it may be, tomorrow morning, before we come back in tomorrow, this body's got to be on that chassis. So with that, I'm getting back to work. We have the uh, GM harness for the engine management system here. We're gonna start laying this out on the motor, make a few connections onto the motor. Got a, there's only a few wires to connect at this point. Should go pretty quick. 
probably take, you know, only an hour. So we just got the e-stop out, um, getting it disassembled from the way it was packaged. And I've got a few things I got to do real quick, and then we're going to get it mocked up on the car. Yeah. Today on Week to Wicked 55 Chevy build, uh, concentrating on under dash wiring, uh, getting the power seats, power windows run, and the blinkers for the outside mirrors run, and uh, try and get that done today. So we'll get back to work. <laughs> Man, this is my favorite job site when I have to go work off site anywhere in the world. You like to come here? This is it. This is it. You know why? You're the only person that knocks the legs off my horse. <laughs> right. Put Every, him right back to size. Are you saying Jason keeps you humble? No. He doesn't keep me humble. Do I sound humble? No. Just keeps him just keeps him at earth level. So we're setting the fuel pressure. Um, on the regulator, so we're doing a bunch of tedious stuff. Um, so why don't you guys check out the second part of the body build? All right guys, as you can see behind me, we got the main skeleton of the car built. And the next thing to do is to hang the doors. And you wanna make sure the door is parallel with the uh, cow shoulder and parallel with the bottom of the floor. And you also wanna check the height of the roof bow here. So you wanna kinda keep that because everything works off the door. Once we get the door fitted, we can go ahead and do the rockers and then the quarter panels. So now that we got the uh, door and the rockers in place, now it's just a matter of getting the quarter panel in and sliding it around until it's comfortable. And I use this uh, 3 16 plate here, run it down the center here, make sure I got a good gap. And I do, even on the bottom. <clears throat> Basically, you just gotta fudge it around a little bit till you're happy, but right now this one's looking pretty good. So I'll go ahead and move on to the other side and do the same thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One man job this way. All right guys, now that I got the uh, panels fitted on the car, I got the uh, rubber gasket fitted nicely, and I also got the uh, drip rails fitted. Now GM actually spot welded this in place. We're gonna go ahead and use panel bond along here because it holds really good. I can go ahead and spot weld on the front and on the back here. And once the roof skin's on here, I can go ahead and remove the fixture, then we can go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, now that we got the roof skin in place, we use a 3 8 rod and vice grips to snap it down nice and tight, and we'll let the, the uh, glue dry overnight, and then it should be good to go, and we'll go ahead and spot weld the front and back lid.
All right, guys, now that I got the uh, square one by, I like to weld this on the uh, firewall itself. That way it keeps a nice straight shape, it keeps it from warping. And when I go and test fit this, I make small cuts and keep just test fitting it, making sure it's nice and tight once I'm done. And I'll go ahead and stitch weld the back, skip every inch, and then I'll go ahead and solid weld down the front face. And then I'll just grind it and make sure it's all good. All right guys, now that I got the uh, firewall feet off and I cut the majority of the firewall out, I can go ahead and stick the new firewall in place and just kind of see where I got to trim it at. And it's gonna be a long process of just cutting a little by little to make sure you don't go too far. That way you can get the perfect fit for your new firewall. And when I'm finished with it, I'm gonna go ahead and weld it all the way across here, stitch it on the back, which will actually make the firewall stronger and the whole front of the car is stiffer. We haven't heard that all day, progress. We just got our brand new aluminum three and a half inch diameter dry shaft. It's got a billet yoke, came with a bowler transmission setup, and we're trying it for the first time to see if we made measurements correct. There we go. To neutral, so we can adjust. I think we made measurements correct. So I'm on my drive shaft with my third member, and uh, it's equipped with a E10 True Track. So this is your modern day Posi Traction that's going to give you all the power to your wheels. This is going to be the shifter hole for our six-speed Tremec by Bowler. We're going to cut this installation out so when it's being drilled, it doesn't tear it to pieces and grab it and fling it and tear it up. We're just throwing these on here for rollers. That way we can get the chassis off the dolly, get it on the ground, roll it forward, get the body in here, get it off that dolly, put the body back on this chassis for the final time. Are we good over there? Should I come this way? I think so. To support the body, we use a subframe under there and they tacked it in, so they're just gonna cut that out real quick. Undo the two re rear bolts and we should be able to lift the body up. The chest, the Don't forget that chassis is not bolted down any longer. Danny, tell me when I'm when I'm good. You'll never be good, Jason. You can keep trying. Well better. Okay, you're lined up? Yeah, I've got kind of go forward. There you go. There. That's a lot better. There we go. We're down, we're off. Calling the 18 for that. Well, that is the end of day three, at least for us for a minute or two. Um, body is down. We got a couple bolts to tighten up on those bushings, but other than that, man, we made good progress. The wiring's pretty much wrapped up and the body's on the chassis, and that's kind of what our goal was, and we're there. So with that said, we're gonna stick around for a little bit and probably tighten some stuff up, but I think the day is done for us. All right, so it is morning of day four and it's gonna be a big day. We got Lee from Muffler Man back there doing the exhaust. That will save us a bunch of time. After that, we gotta get the car down here on jack stands because Larry and the crew from TMI will be here to do a full interior. Door panels, seats, carpet, trunk kit. We already have the headliner in because we had to have the windshield out to do that, so they did that last week. And when, they're, when TMI is in there, we're gonna be around the engine bay doing all the sheet metal, wiring, plumbing. So I'm gonna let Lee get to work. Why don't you guys check out some of the paint work on the 55? My name's Craig Williams and I'm with uh, BASF uh, out of Wasco here in Columbus, Ohio. And 
We're getting ready to shoot the 55 and um, we're going to talk about some of the products we're going to be using on it today. Uh, we're going to start off with this sealer. It's a new sealer from R&M. It's uh, 875 and 876. Um, great sealer, dries solid. You, you can sand it, denib it if you need to. Um, it's white and it's black, so you can uh, make any shade of gray that you need to make. So once we have that foundation down, we're going to go over it with Dymont base coat. Um, and Dymont's a good polyester base coat, dries firm. Um, same way if you have to denib, if you have to fix anything, it's very user friendly. So um, we'll get that down. And then once that's good and dry and we have that where we want it, we're going to shoot the 5300 clear over it. Um, 5300 is a good glamour clear. Um, if you're baking, it can be baked and ready to sand in about 40 minutes. Um, if not, you're looking at about three hours and uh, it'll be ready to work with. So that's pretty much the process we're going to do. We're going to do the, the red and silver two-tone. We're going to have the red on the lower part and the silver um, on the upper two-tone part. So while I'm in there, I'm going to be using my, my 3M VersaFlow fresh air system. So uh, anxious to try it out. 3M is one of their newer fresh airs that's out. So we're about ready. I guess me and David will get at it and start spraying. Okay, so what we got is Hot Rods by Dean uh, radiator setup. It's really cool for the Tri Fives. Okay. What I like about this option is I don't think anybody has. We got a removable top bar here in case you want to take your motor and trans out without taking out the whole system. So that's like the best option on here. Nice. We're going to start putting this together and uh, putting it in the car cool. and giving it a go. Straight. God, you scared me. I thought the car fell. Why you have to do that? It, you're right. In, how did you think the car fell when you're staring at it and it didn't move? I wasn't staring at it. I was <laughs> <laughs> Why? Someone jacked it up a little. A little more? I got it. I got it, Ange. Larry, what's happening, man? What's happening, man? What's going Dude, on? this is it, huh? This is everything. You're all ready to go. So this door panel, seats, trunk kit, floor, everything. Everything is in. So you got your console, you got your visors, I mean, rear package tray, rear seat. I mean, everything is ready to bolt in. Right now we're finishing up the Painless Pro Series chassis harness for the Tri-5 Chevys. So we're basically moving all the wires that we're hanging uh, up into the dash so TMI interiors can start doing their interior. So what's unique about these cars, these custom builds, shifter locations are always in different spots. So we've done it where you measure where your shifter is going to go and you're, you cut a hole into it and then it has a, a shifter boot that actually will install in whatever replacement you have your console and stuff. So he's actually doing that right now. Yeah, if you bend the tabs over. All right, now I'm going to install the United Pacific LED tail lights and reverse lights. What we've got here is to mount all your front end sheet metal, there's a kit that Dan Chuck sells, part number 791. It's called a front end sheet metal fastener kit. And it fastens everything from your hood hinges all the way forward, your inner fender wells, everything. I mean, it's this whole complete kit right here. And it really makes the job super easy. So, thing to get. You're getting ready to put the Dan Chuck bumper. It's actually a smoothie bumper, so it removes all your uh, outside bolts. So it's a lot cleaner. And uh, we're gonna mock it up right now. Got some tape on here to make sure we don't hit the car. You got yours in, Mike? See it? We probably need a drift. All right, so we are kind of late in the night on day four. TMI guys came in and kicked ass, and interior looks nice. Completed too. On the flip side of that, we did get no wiring done today, and we have a ton left to do. 
the core supports in, radiators in, all that plumbing's done. AC is wrapped up finally, so that is a good thing. But we have so much wiring to do. Um, still got to hang the fenders, the grill, hood, and a bunch of more stuff. Don't want to be all drama out, so I'm not going to be. We have a good, strong team. We got another day left. We'll wrap this car up tomorrow, fire it up, and ride off into the sunset. All right, so it is the beginning of day five, and that makes me happy because we will be finished, wrapped up, fired up. Car will be outside sometime today, but I'm gonna read off a little list of things we have to do starting with the engine. Starter wire, fluids, air intake, which we gotta make, mass airflow sensor. Then we're into the interior with the clutch and pedal. Finish wiring, gauges, trim, glove box, plumbing, of brake lines, power steering. And then we're getting into the steering column. Uh, all the front sheet metal still has to go on there because you can't see it, but it's not on. Uh, sway bar, wheels, tires, fired up. With that being said, we have a ton of work to do. We've got a good team behind us that's gonna get it done. And uh, I'm gonna jump in there, give them a hand, and uh, sometime today, maybe sometime tonight, probably sometime tonight, we will wrap this thing up, drive it out of here, get some driving shots, and uh, call it a long, good, successful week. In order for this car to run at all, you need a mass airflow sensor in there. It's directional. What I've done is cut out the slot for it. I'm cleaning it up right now. Comes with this little manifold here, which has the same contour as the four inch diameter tube. You're gonna stick that in there. I'm gonna put a little bead of silicone around it, screw it down, and that'll be a wrap. So I finished the cold air intake system and the mass airflow sensor mounted is mounted. Three key things. It's very critical that you have the mass airflow sensor uh, pointing in the right direction. It needs to be within six inches of straight minimum and a minimum of oh, 10 inches from the throttle body. So we're at about 12. Okay. All right, so we're here with our certified AC technician, Luis. And uh, he's hooked up all the ports up to the compressor. And we're gonna go through an auto setting. What it's gonna do is pull vacuum, get all the moisture out. Then it'll hold, we'll hold that vacuum, make sure there's no leaks. And then from there, we'll charge the system. That's right. All right. Let's do it. And what are we gonna do after we charge the AC? Get inside and get a blanket. And then watch them put the rest of the car together? Oh, sure. Let's do it. Why not? Big bubbles. Big ones? Yep. That's a good thing. No leaks? No leaks. Perfect. All right, so we're checking for leaks through the filler neck, making sure everything's gonna be a-okay. All right, let's go ahead and get these wheels on. If I could just find the studs. Oh, guys. This is, this is gonna be weird. Here, let's open up the manual. We'll get everything on the manual. <laughs> we got the wrong fender. Give us a break. Well, first we got to get the gaskets in there. Slide the gaskets in there. Okay, now the fender's got to go in between the core support. That's and then gonna, I got to go way back. Man. That's going to be the hardest part. Where are the sections at on this? Section 11, start a cheat wound. A dribble. There we go. All right, so we put the car up on the builder blocks. This way we can line the front fenders, we can get the hood on there. They're doing the front sway bar because everything's now under a load, meaning it's at right height. Put the front bumper on, we're up at a, we're at a good height too that we can do the front bumper and everything else. So for all these uh, restoration parts, bright work, grill, a bunch of trim, a bunch of stuff in the interior, all came from Dan Chuck. I mean, there must be 200 pieces of parts here, so that's your place to go. Uh. Uh. Uh, 
Everything's working up here. Should we crack the line, Jay, and see if there's air in this? System? There's nowhere to crack the line. We've got a plush interior, good suspension. Oh, yeah. I know the brakes work good just pulling out of the parking lot. Nice and, tight. and definitely the first car we've done with a T56 six speed. So, and pretty cool. LT, right? First LT. Oh, that's right. First LT, which yeah. man, can't believe how quiet it is in here. I know. It's not a rattle or a shake. Nope. The car's Sounds comfortable. Good. Got a center console to put your arm. Yeah. And we also did power windows, the switches are up there. Yeah, That's this car has cool. a ton of power in it, which is another reason we took a while to get this car yeah. up and running. But hey, look at the end result. It was a long week. Let's see what the thing got. <laughs> train tracks, definitely accelerates good. Oh yeah. Handle train tracks are problem. There nice. we go. It moves, man. Yeah, it does. It moves. It's, it, it's got a nice, aggressive sound when you're on it, but totally quiet when you're yeah. off of it. We're done. Yeah. The build's over. Time for some R&R, &R, a couple drinks. Yep, definitely. Back to the family for a few. I think and get so. back at it again. All right. Yeah, I'm impressed with the power. Man, it feels good. <laughs> Sounds great. 